All right, how's it going, y'all? So today, we're gonna to be talking about Cloudflare tunnels. And these allow you to do so many really cool things and get really fast performance, even if you're behind CGNAT or something like Starlink, as well as help secure your network by allowing external access to the NAS and anything else you'd like, but without directly exposing your NAS to the internet, instead using Cloudflare. And we're gonna be setting this up on a Synology NAS, but realistically, you can do this on pretty much any home lab environment because it's just running on Docker and they've got a ton of applications that use it. So it's really at whatever you'd like to set up. And today we're gonna to be going over how to set up Cloudflare tunnels on Synology NAS and be able to expose Synology Drive to the internet with signed SSL certificates without doing any port forwarding. And it's gonna be way faster than Quick Connect. Okay, so first, what are Cloudflare tunnels? Cloudflare tunnels are kind of like a web firewall that allow you to expose things on a local network to the internet without requiring any kind of port forwarding or anything like that. Essentially, you run a Cloudflare daemon on your local network somewhere, normally in a Docker container, that's what we're gonna do in this case, and that tunnel then talks to Cloudflare servers and establishes an encrypted connection between the two. Now what you can use is you can use Cloudflare servers to essentially be your firewall in front of your NAS and all traffic will flow through that encrypted connection to the NAS and back. So this means that your public IP address is never exposed using Cloudflare tunnels and you don't have to do any kind of port forwarding. And this will even work in cases like Starlink where you don't actually have a public IP address. The way we're gonna be setting this up allows you to share files with people on the internet and basically have anybody be able to access Synology Drive. But this could also be a website you're hosting on the NAS or really anything you want, as long as it runs on SSH or web traffic. And I think there's one more, but really it's only for web traffic, at least right now. So this is not going to work with Synology Drive Share Sync. At least I've not been able to get that to work just yet. This can also be used to limit access, similar to something like a VPN server, However, it uses web authentication, and so it's a lot more lenient. I would not say it's nearly as secure as a VPN, but if you do wanna just have a bunch of employees be able to access a resource locally, and you know it's probably fine if it's exposed to the internet, this is a great solution, but I would not say it's something that you should use for really, really, really sensitive stuff because it is not a full-blown VPN under your control. You do have access limitations, but it's not the same level as a VPN. So we're gonna go ahead and set this up. And for requirements, it's pretty basic. You do need a domain with Cloudflare. You, I think, can go by with a test domain, but if you don't have a domain, really just go out and get one and add it to Cloudflare. This is going to be set up assuming you've already done that. There are tutorials out there on getting a domain. It's pretty easy. And just follow Cloudflare's instructions on how to use it for your DNS. So it's also going to assume that you have a NAS or a device on your network that can run Docker. So if you're doing this on Synology NAS, you need to be able to install Container Manager. The vast majority of NASes can do this, though the non plus J models, I think, are limited. There's a compatibility list. I can leave it in the description below. But with those two things, you can now open up pretty much any services you'd like to the internet directly from Cloudflare without doing any port forwarding or even having a public IP address. And we're gonna go right in and get started. So I'm first gonna open up my Cloudflare dashboard and we're going to go into Zero Trust. And Zero Trust has a ton of stuff here. And by the way, we're gonna be using the Cloudflare free tunnel for all of this so it doesn't cost you anything. And what we're gonna do is we're going to go into networks and just go ahead and create a new tunnel. So a tunnel is that device on the local network that is going to be able to route our traffic and essentially create that secure connection. So we're gonna go ahead and hit add tunnel and we're going to use Cloudflare B. Give it a name. And now we're gonna have a bunch of options here. So this is a very sensitive token that I would not be showing you unless I first destroyed it. So it will be destroyed before you see this video, but we're gonna go ahead and copy it and we're gonna open it up in a text editor. So this right here is our super sensitive secret access token that you need to basically destroy after this and it's a one-time use. But now we need to go ahead and get our NAS set on up. So we're gonna go into our NAS 
and we're going to go in and make sure we've got Container Manager installed. If you're running older versions of DSM, this is Docker. All right, and now that it's running, we just hit open. And this is the simplest Docker container in the world to do. We're gonna go ahead and go into our registry and just search for Cloudflare. And it is this guy right here, Cloudflare D from Cloudflare. Double click to download, the latest. And now that it's downloaded, we're gonna go ahead and hit run. And this is pretty much the only Docker container that does not require any volumes or really anything. All we're gonna do is give it a name and if I were you, I would make it match whatever you named it earlier here. And just enable auto restart. Don't need any port settings, don't need any volume settings. And we are going to run this on our host network. And this right here is what we need to add on in. So if you look right here, our default section right here matches Cloudflare, no auto update. So we're just going to delete out all of that stuff to being this tunnel run token and just paste it on in there. Now we're going to hit next done. So as our container is built, we should be able to come back right here. And I mean, remarkably quickly, it has connected on in. And so now we can go ahead and safely blow away this file because we'll never need it again. If you need to, you just respin a new container. So now we get to choose what we'd like. So I'm going to go ahead and do drive demo. So this is basically what public host name you want this to be accessible with. And you can add in multiple ones down here. And they actually have added in a fair amount of additional things, including SMB. We'll test that out at another day though. And so this is now where we're going to go ahead and set this up. And the way we do this is we have this URL and this is what is locally accessible from the container. And we're going to choose HTTPS. And now what we want to do is we want to put in the IP address and port that Synology Drive is going to be running on. So my Synology currently gets an IP address of 10.30.0.109. And I would recommend making that a DHCP reservation in your router. And we're going to go ahead and type that in. And now we want this to only go to Synology Drive. We don't want this to go anywhere else. We only want Synology Drive accessibly through this, which is great. So this way you can open up Synology Drive so you can share files very quickly without having to open up DSM and have that be publicly accessible. And Synology has a very easy way of doing this through login portals. So we're going to come into our applications and we're going to go ahead and edit this because I did this in another demo, but we're going to go ahead and give this a customized HTTPS port. And what this is going to do is it is going to say, anytime you get traffic on two, three, four, five, it is going to send it only to Synology drive. So now, just like that, when we go to port 2345, we see that we get directly to Synology Drive. And we're gonna go ahead and now add that into our tunnel right here. Because we know if on the local network you go to HTTPS 10.30.0.109 colon 2345, it will be brought to Synology Drive. Now under our advanced application settings, we have options for no TLS verify. What we will do is we're going to check that because we don't care about having a signed SSL certificate on the NAS itself. And we are assuming that the local network is secure and nobody's going to be IP spoofing on our network. So what we're going to go ahead and do is now save our tunnel. Okay. So now we are all set up. Let's go ahead and test it out. Let me go ahead and just copy and paste this. I guess we can just open up right here and we are brought into Synology drive. And just like that, we are able to access this anywhere in the world with a signed SSL certificate. Now, one thing that will currently happen is we want to make sure that we also use this URL for everything, right? We, we want to share files based off of this URL because we are setting this up where you can share it out with clients, friends, family, everything like that. Anybody you need to be able to send a file to at full speed. So 
we're going to now go ahead and tell Synology Drive to use that URL whenever you're sharing files with people. To do that, we're going to come into Synology Drive Admin Console, Settings, Sharing, and Enable Sharing Link Customization and Force HTTPS. And we're going to go ahead and just create a customized one. So now we will share out with that. And so if we go out and we want to share a file with somebody, you will see it will be created on the URL that we set up there and everything will be happy, SSL will work, everything. So one thing you need to know is this is currently publicly accessible. It's not accessible by any IP address, but if somebody knows drivedemo.spacerex.co and you were hitting that right now while I'm making this tutorial before I destroyed everything, you would get to Synology Drive on my 923 test bench. What we may wanna do is we may wanna add in additional authentication options. We can go ahead and use some of the access options to limit access down to this for various different options you've got. So we are gonna go back in and we are going to create a new access group. And this is where we can say anybody who's on the Space Rex domain or anything like that, you can go ahead and choose. And this is where you can get really in depth very quickly. What we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna add a group. We're gonna call it Space Rex employees. So we're gonna say anybody who's a Space Rex employee can access this. So the way we can do this is with a ton of different options. And the easiest is gonna be emails ending in. So what I'm gonna say is, if you've got a Space Rex email, you're allowed in. But once again, there are a zillion options you can do here and really set it to however you want to, including just specific people. So now that we've gone ahead and created our group, we now can go ahead and create our application. And if you haven't already, you need to go ahead and just sign up for the free tier. It'll bill you $0. And it's up to, I think, 50 users, very easy. But what we're gonna go ahead and do is add our application. And it's going to be self-hosted, but all these things can also be used. We're gonna call it Synology Drive for the application name. And for session duration, 24 hours should be totally fine. So we're gonna use the exact same URL we already talked about earlier. And now we can go ahead and just keep these as default, but there's a ton of stuff you can do. But we're just gonna go down and choose our identity providers, which I'll go ahead and show setting one of those on up. And you can also use warp, tons of stuff here, but for the very basics, we're just gonna do this. Create a policy. We're going to say that SpaceRex employees are going to be able to access this. And we should now just be able to skip out on this. So now let's go back to that Synology drive. And now, it is forcing us to get an email code. So that is where we can limit our access to this. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get this email and then it's going to allow me into Synology Drive. And now you're able to access. So once again, that is not something I would die on a hill with for your entire security. Do not just use that for your sole source of authentication, but for applications that are hardened, but ne not necessarily something you want to just expose directly for the internet, that is a great middle layer of security where you don't require a VPN and all these extra complex configurations, but can still limit access down to smaller methods. And within here, there's more and more options you can add in under your settings on all the different authentication methods you'd ever want to use. There is a whole lot of stuff you can do here, and it's just up to whatever you need to set all this stuff on up. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this. There's tons of stuff that we can do here, but that's gonna be the basics for this video. There's so much more customization and access, and really Cloudflare has a ton of features that you can use to extend this even further. So definitely check all that stuff out. If you have any other questions, leave those down in the comments below. And if you wanna hire me for consulting, there's a link for that down in the description below. All right, have a good one, bye.